All right, we want to talk about symmetry for solving some simple E&M problems. Say a little bit about an interesting way to look at a signal from a submarine. We'll say some more about some conservation laws and parity as they relate to symmetry. The symmetry operations that we're going to consider are going to be rotations about axes. Here's a X, Y, Z coordinate system. The x-axis is perpendicular to the board, and the y-z plane is parallel to the board. We're also going to consider reflections for the symmetry operations. And here I sketched in the mirror. You have to understand the orientation of that mirror, so I spell out over here that the mirror is in the x-z plane, and the mirror is therefore perpendicular to the board. And if you consider your arm to be a vector, and let's say the board was actually the mirror now, and you looked in the mirror, you would see your arm pointing in the same direction as it is outside the mirror. So the X and Z axes will point in the same direction, X to X, Z to Z. But look at the y direction now. Again, suppose the board is the mirror and my arm is a vector. I'm pointing away from the mirror, but looking into the mirror, it looks like my arm is going into the mirror. So the y axis will go into what looks like the minus y direction in the mirror. So the first problem we want to consider is a simple problem of an infinitely long line of charge. infinitely long. So here's the line of charge. And we'll pick an arbitrary point over here and ask ourselves, what's the electric field? Well, maybe there's an EZ component, an EY component, and an EX component. Now what kind of symmetry operations can we do to check out those components. And the idea is to do something to the line of charge so after we're done the operation, the symmetry operation, it looks exactly like what we started with. So one of the things that we can do, since there's no difference between the ends, no difference along the length, we can rotate 180 degrees around the EY axis. So if we take our line of charge and flip it around 180 degrees, we would have exactly the same picture. But we're going to flip our vectors around in that operation. So after we do the rotation, we come over here and we would see the EY component as it was before. But doing that 180 degree rotation, the EZ would be pointing down, EZ, and the EX would now be, instead of coming out perpendicular to the board, it's going in perpendicular to the board. So here's the EX. So when you look at this, what do you see? You see that EX here, if we bring this, cord, this system of vectors back over to here, the EX would have to equal minus EX, and the only way that can happen is if EX is equal to zero. Likewise with the EZ, we see that EZ is equal to minus EZ, and the only way that can be true is if EZ is equal to zero. But the EY equals EY. So it looks like EY has survived. We'll do one other operation now. And in this case what we'll do the only thing we have is the EY. So here's the EY. 
and now we'll do a reflection in the mirror just to check this out a little further. So over here we imagine a mirror. And if we do the reflection, what we said before over here earlier was that being perpendicular to the mirror, the EY will change directions when we see it in the mirror. So the EY over here will be pointing into the mirror, and that's a little hard to draw, but it's pointing into the mirror. You can imagine the line of charge actually on the surface of the mirror, but I show it displaced a little bit. That's all right, so here's the EY. And we want to bring this point back over here so that we complete the symmetry so we are exactly back where we started from. And the way we can do that is we can rotate around here 180 degrees. And if we do that, you'll see that bringing the EY around 180 degrees, it comes back here. So it looks like there is an EY. So if you would look down, this part, this point is arbitrary. So if you would look down on the end of the line of charge, since that point is arbitrary, the electric field would be pointing away, and any other place we would go around the line of charge, we would see the electric field pointing away. Depending on what the sign of the charge is, it could be also pointing inward. But let's say it's positive charge, so it's pointing outward. Inward would be if the line of charge was negative. So you can see the electric field is pointing out radially along the line of charge. Now let's consider the case for a magnetic field. In the case of the magnetic field, we have to consider a property of the magnetic field, and that is that the magnetic field is a pseudo vector. And what we showed here when we did the reflection case, we showed it for a real vector. And by real, I don't mean real and imaginary as in the square root of minus one equaling i. That's not what we're talking about here when we say the, the real part real, when we say the word real. Um, the magnetic field is a pseudo vector. And in reflection, it transforms exactly the opposite of what you see here. So the x goes to minus x, the y goes to y, and the z goes to z. property of the pseudo vector under reflection compared to a real vector. Electric field was a real vector. The magnetic field is a pseudo vector. So let's, for the case of the magnetic field, let's assume that we have a current flowing on an infinitely long wire. And at an arbitrary point over here on the side, just as in the case of the electric field, we'll say that we have a Z component, a Y component, and an X component. Now, in the case of the electric field, we were able to rotate 180 degrees. If we do that here, we're not going to maintain the symmetry. The current is now flowing down. We rotate 180 degrees, it would be flowing up. So we, we can't do that operation. But we can still do the reflection in a mirror. 
And if we do that, recalling how things will transform in the mirror, oh, this should be a minus z here. The pseudo vector will change direction when it's parallel to the mirror. So in the mirror here, what we will see, we'll see the z pointing down. because it's going in the other direction now. The X, which was coming out, will now be going in to the board. And, and the Y, which is perpendicular to the mirror, it stays the same, so it is actually coming out. So all these reflections are opposite to what we saw in the case of the electric field. So now what we can do, considering that the mirror face is actually along our infinitely long wire carrying a current, we can now rotate 180 degrees because we want to bring this back over the here. And if we do that, you can see that the BY, which is pointing that way now, will be pointing this way. The BZ up here, down here, will still be down when we do the rotation. And the X, when we rotate around, it will be parallel to the BX direction that we had here. So for this to be the same, you can see that BY has to equal minus BY. BX equals BX. And BZ equals minus BZ. BZ equals BZ. BZ equals minus BZ. So the only one that survives, the only way this can be true is it's equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. So the only component that survives is the BX component. So if you look down from the top of the wire, we would have a BX component pointing this way here, but that's an arbitrary point. So anywhere as we go around, I'm trying to draw a circle here, anywhere as we would go around, since that's an arbitrary point, the field BX would be pointing, the magnetic field would be pointing that way. So you can see the field is circular around the wire, and if you remember the right hand rule, your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field, which is what we have here. In the next part, in part two, we'll apply some of these ideas to a submarine case.